Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today's TV show that I will be reviewing is the Disney Plus original series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But before I get into my review, if you are enjoying the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and smash that like button. I will greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't seen episode one, of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, consider this your spoiler warning. So let's get right into it. We first start off with Sam in kind of just in deep thought, kind of contemplating, and we see Captain America's shield uh, lying on the bed, and we could see that Sam is really having a problem adapting to the role that Captain America gave him at the end of Endgame. And we, we hear Cap, what he told him when, 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 when he asked him, hey, how does it feel? And he goes, like, it belongs to someone else. And then we, we, we just right go, you know, jump into the titles where it says, you know, the, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And Sam is right in the middle of a mission. We see him on a plane. And he has to, he's working with the U.S. forces to kind of bring down or rescue, actually, a soldier that has been kidnapped. And just in that, you know, Sam kind of bravado, he takes full, you know, obviously he can't, I guess the accords are still maybe intact in this, you know, in this time, six months after the snap. So he can't cross borders, but it's just, it might not even be the accord. It just might be what we have now. Like you can't go past certain airspace or else that's considered an act of war or a hostile, you know, action. So anyways, who knew that Falcon could kick so much, but I mean, the way he was flying, the way he was maneuvering to get to his target was pretty dope to see that whole sequence where he's chasing um the bad guys was like pretty dope but anyways i jumped a little ahead so there's he has to go and get intel from this plane and he you know he jumps out of the plane and he goes over there you know he glides over there and falls on top and the pilot he, he realizes that the u uh, the pilot that was the u.s soldier pilot is is shot dead assassinated in the side passenger seat of the plane the co-pilot chair and he glances over to to the pilot's chair and he re realized that the plane has been hijacked and we get our first little easter egg in that one or surprise so the villain that was in where he has that fight i think it was in captain america the winter soldier where he has that hand-to-hand -hand combat scene well guess who makes an appearance in this first in this first uh, episode sure enough it, there's our guy and he's one of the terrorists that has kidnapped hijacked the plane and has also kidnapped one of the soldiers in in that plane you know maybe for some intel or whatnot so after that obviously sam is going to go in action so he uses his well he basically starts going into action and he uses nightwing to break into the plane and then the the kick ass ensues and again like i said earlier who knew that falcon kicks so much butt i'm so glad they made him that awesome i mean we could have used these skills and we did see a little bit in and in, in um well towards the end of end game but we definitely saw that in infinity war and i guess we saw a little tiny bit in civil war but not to this extent i mean the way he was maneuvering the mastery that he had now over flight i mean it was pretty iron man to me and i know it's stark tech but he has to be the one maneuvering i don't think it's an ai moving all his equipments from his hip from his suit uh so i was really impressed with how how he's maneuvered or learned to become almost one with his suit 
and that whole chase scene was dope so he, you know he goes in the plane he's kicking butt and he's taking out all the bad guys and there was this a part though when they, they're fighting and i guess they did have the jumpsuits when they jumped out it just didn't look that way from when they were fighting but from one scene to another, they already had these jumpsuits where they basically, when they jump out of the plane and they're starting to glide. And if you've seen those extreme, you know, sports where the, the uh, they do cliff jumpings and they have that suit that has those webbings that makes them feel like basically almost like they're flying. It's basically what they're using to escape from the plane and escape from Falcon. And Falcon gives chase. And I mean, before that, like that was probably from one scene to another. I was like, okay, I guess. I mean, I, I just had to buy that that they either had it on, I missed it, or Falcon was just that knocked out or distracted because he happened to get like punched or like thrown off to the to the side. And I'm not sure if he was knocked out, but how quick they got that those uniforms on and and you know ready to jump was was pretty suspect as far as that but that was the only part in that scene that i had anyways so they are evil people just jump out of the plane and he starts giving chase and there's helicopters there's missiles there's bullets and he's just diving escaping i felt i felt kind of scared for sam for a little bit i was like oh are they gonna take him out are we gonna see uh are, are we gonna see falcon go down and i was a little bit like uh, afraid for Sam because that was a lot of firepower that he was taking on and he his his um I want I want to say avoiding maneuvers but it's not but the way he just dodged all that kind of gun you know and missiles and all that stuff and at and at towards the end uh the way he uses that to his advantage was pretty freaking dope so anyway so there's this huge you know uh chase in the sky and the bad guys get to a helicopter and he's running out of time they're gonna pass uh into a, a different border into a different country and the soldiers that sam is working the u.s military that he's working on the floor tells him like hey you can't go that we have to call this mission off because once you once you cross that you know that that boundary that border it, it's illegal we we can't do nothing anymore we have to turn away and uh, in the fight, uh, his propel, his his boosters get damaged, so he can't really do nothing. So obviously, the 60 second mark is when everything turns on, and he has that one last minute to complete the rescue mission. And our our terrorists jump. There's this helicopter waiting for them, and that scene where our te the terrorists go into the to the chopper. I don't know if that was done for reals or it was CGI, but if they did that for real, hats off to those stunt people. God, that was a nice shot, and that was so exhilarating to see. Uh, so if that was if that was like done for real, my hats off to you guys. But anyway, so Sam uses there's missiles that were shot from a previous you know uh, helicopter, and he destroys that one. But there's still three more missiles left. And he uses those missiles to kind of take down our terrorists and the chopper and rescue our soldier. And he uses he, that that scene was pretty dope. It, it seems like the terrorist, the guy that was fighting one on one with Cap in in the Winter Soldier, uh, escapes. But you don't really know. So after that, we cut to Sam in. I don't know what country he's in. I can't remember. It's not in front of me, but we cut to Sam basically sitting down with the military uh, gentleman or the young man that was helping him in uh, on the on the ground when he was actively uh, doing the mission in the scene before. And they're just kind of hanging out in in the town square. It appears having tea, and Sam's kind of fixing some of the damage that was caused during the gunfight and i, li I like the guy that was um the I, I don't know his name but the, the the soldier that was with him i liked the dialogue it was pretty funny and they're calling it the blimp in this too the same as spider-man uh far from home so they seem to be using that and they dived into a little bit about that and 
I like the part where the soldier asked Sam about Captain America because Sam's, you know, Sam's ready to leave and the soldier tells him like, hey, I've been hearing theories and all over the internet with these theories. So I love that because God knows we're going to have a ton of theories after. I mean, we've had them already for years, but they just know us so well. And he goes like, it's all over the internet. And there's a bunch of theories that Captain America actually went to the moon and is looking down at us. I laughed so hard. And Sam's reaction was like, what? Like, really? You should not be listening to no one, you know, nothing like that from the, in the internet. And as he's, he has to leave, right? So that was a little fun moment, but Sam has to leave. He says he's going back to Washington. He goes, well, what are you going to do in Washington? He goes, oh, I'm going to go do moon stuff and just kind of fuels the, the, the soldier's imagination. Like, oh, maybe it is true. Maybe Cap is in the moon so i found that just dope so then we cut to to washington dc and there's you know we we see a picture of captain america and we see war machine roadies there which was another dope cameo i was like oh dope you know there's another one there's two already in 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 the first you know um in this first uh episode and it's basically sam giving a speech about how he can't accept or, 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 or continue the Captain America role because there's only one Captain America. I believe that old man Cap has already passed away. So spoiler alert, this is a theory at least that I have. But in case it's gonna, it, it turns out true, spoiler alert, I think Cap's already dead at this point. And it's almost like a eulogy and a way to pay homage to Cap and saying hey this belongs to someone else and it doesn't belong to me and the speech that he gave was amazing i love whoever wrote that for sam uh it was so powerful i liked it it, it made me feel stuff it made me re think about captain america and all the 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 i mean the experience that we've all had with cap since you know captain america first avenger until we saw him in endgame uh, as old man cap i mean there's so much to to reminisce on so i thought it was very it was a very uh powerful and well-written spe speech for sam but after that Rody kind of tells him hey let's go take a walk let me talk to you real quick and he and he tells them like hey why why didn't you take it because they're walking around like i'm assuming this is the captain america museum and he's asking him like dude why, why didn't you take you know the the mantle of captain america and he tries to explain to Rhodey, and Rhodey's like look there's we're in new times there's no avengers there's no groups there's there's more villains this world is in chaos you know still trying to adapt from all these people being brought back everyone's still trying to adjust and he and he tells them like it would be you know people need something to believe in but he tells them what he what exactly what we heard in the first scene. He says, "All I heard when you know I was in my in my house, all I heard was when Captain America told me how does it feel, and I told him it feels like someone else, and he was that someone else was Steve's, like you know that it belong it feels like it belongs to someone else, and the the shield belongs to to Steve Rogers, Captain America, and that was his rationale for for why he couldn't take up the mantle and." We have that scene that's been in the promos where he's looking through the glass at the shield and you know we go from such a s somber moment then we cut to uh i think it's like somewhere in europe but we see the winter soldier and i'm not talking like bucky wakanda bucky i'm talking about winter soldier from the winter soldier like straight up with the 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 arm with the star and i'm like wait what what's going on and I, I'm over here trying to wrap my head around what I'm seeing. I'm like, did Bucky go evil again? I'm like, what? What's what, what happened to his Wakanda arm? And it took me a second to kind of put two and two together before we see Bucky wake up. But before we see Bucky wake up, we see him as the Winter Soldier and some of the atrocities he did, at least in this one moment. You think he's taking out bad guys and maybe he was, I don't know. It looked like they were doing something shady, like a, like a, a, a rich, uh, king or something in a foreign country. And he goes in there and he just starts killing people. 
And there's this poor innocent man, and looks like an Asian a Asian young man, and he's he, he's like almost you know I don't know if he had something to do or he was doing something that needed to be, why he needed to be killed, but the Winter Soldier I'm gonna call him that so we separate the Winter Soldier from Bucky, the Winter Soldier that we that we got to know in Captain America the Winter Soldier and a little bit in Captain America uh, Civil War, he basically kills this young man in cold blood and Bucky wakes up from what is was his nightmare and I was like oh so he's just having flashbacks and mind you why that's important is because he was supposed to be cured from any 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 of these kind of things in Wakanda and when I saw that, you know, that he woke up from the dream and he's sleeping on the floor like ex-military people do, at least what we found out in Cap Captain America and the Winter Soldier when, when uh, Sam and, and uh, Steve Rogers have that, you know, little talk about, hey, what, is, you know, how have you been adapting after war? And he's like, yeah, I, you know, I sleep on the floor because when I sleep on the bed, it feels like, and then, you know, Cap finishes the sense. Yeah, it feels like a, like a like you're lying in a bed of marshmallows and you sink right in. And it, I like that homage to that, you know, that callback basically to that movie. And we see Bucky doing the same because he is also ex-military. And after that, we have that somber moment. And for me, like I said, I'm like, uh oh, you know, he's not fully healed. And we jump to Bucky, you know, our Bucky that we know, post Wakanda. And he's doing therapy. He's in some kind of mandated therapy. It's some. It's he. He's been pardoned. There's no more. Like he's not a fugitive because I'm assuming what he did in Endgame and help defeat Thanos. So he he's been pardoned everything, but he has to do mandatory therapy to make sure that he's not going to relapse. And I'm not gonna go too much into it, but. I thought the banter between Bucky and the therapist was go because she's apparently has also served and seen stuff in in service. She's a military therapist and she could relate to what Bucky is going to. And I thought the whole back and forth banter was brilliant. And the way the therapist ended up using the notebook, he goes, oh, here you go with the notebook. And, and Bucky doing the, he's like, oh, this is passive aggressive behavior talking to the therapist. I thought it was gold. I, I love that dialogue. Like I said, just really well written so far during, you know, when up to this scene. And I'll just say it outright. The whole episode was very, very well written. But this is where my critique is. The shots of Bucky and the doctor, they were so close to their face. I didn't like that. I was like, why does it have to be so close? And I know they were trying to give me a feel as to, you know, maybe a eerie kind of a, a feel to it, but it reminded me more of the Joker, the Joaquin Phoenix one. And when the, he was in his therapy session with his doctor and they had those close ups, but they got even closer with this one. So maybe they were trying to emulate that, but I, I wasn't feeling it. So that is my little tiny critique about it. The, just the close-up shot. When they were far apart and they were going back and forth, I thought that was gold. Brilliant. And like I said, well-written all around. And even the dialogue within those close shots was still well-written. It was just a shot. I don't know why they took that artistic direction for that, but whatever. But in this, we find out that he feels guilty, obviously. You know, Bucky, for what he did. You know, we saw that in, in Civil War where he, it wasn't him. He was under control. And when he killed Tony's mom and dad, he, he, he that's something that he, that carries heavy in his soul. And even when he was fighting with Iron Man, he says, when Iron Man says, do you even remember their, their face or their name? And he goes, I remember everyone, all of them. And we kind of get a sense of uh, who they are. He has a list kind of, again, going back and, and they're paying homage to Captain America. Like Captain America had a list of stuff to do and, and Bucky tells him, you know, the Marvin Gaye soundtrack and he has all the, the movies and stuff that he has to watch while Bucky has a reverse list of stuff that he wants to amend or people that he has to amend to that he did wrong. And we cut to a scene where he's, 
he basically tells the do- the therapist, hey, you know, because uh, she says you've been having dreams and he's denying it. And he knows, like, he's allowed to help, but he's only allowed to help under certain conditions. And he says, okay, fine, I did do this. And there was this congresswoman that I helped, you know, when I was the winter soldier. And I had to, I had to get rid of her or take her down from power to be able to make amends for something that I did. And we see a very intriguing but very comical way of how he went around the rules to not get in trouble but you we could see he, he crossed out that name and he and he gets this congresswoman arrested by incriminating her putting a bug in her car and he basically like taps you know gets the information that he needs and and that's you know he basically that's it and she tells him like look you're free you're a free man there's nothing to stop you what do you want to do and she basically calls him out though she goes look you you have no friends you have no one and she says let me see and he goes oh i have friends she goes let me see your phone and he gives her her phone and she says look you don't even have 10 contacts and you've been avoiding sam's call and the only one you've called is your therapist that's pretty freaking sad and he tells him hey you don't want to be alone and, and and being alone it's his own personal how which it seems to be you know hitting home a little bit so once this brilliant interaction between him and his therapy we cut to new york and we see an old man and a young man arguing back and forth because the young man threw the trash in the trash can of this older gentleman and he go and the young guy like hey we share you know we share we're neighbors we should be able to share your trash is not half full but the old man was having none of it he takes out the trash and he throws it at that time bucky's walking by and i guess knows the old gentleman and kind of intervenes and he says hey you know what stop you can't be treating people like this this is bucky to the old man telling him like hey you can't treat people like this and the old man, you know, like well, how they portray old men, stubborn, hard-headed, and it's basically that. And he says, hey, let me take you out to lunch. And the old man agrees because Bucky says, "What, you know, because he's saying no. Let's go to lunch. He goes, no. And then Bucky says, what if I pay? And he goes, okay, but no talking. And the first thing, of course, when someone says no nothing, we cut to a scene. And sure enough, he's showing them something and the old man's talking to Bucky. They, had, they just have this kind of hard relationship. And... The, there's this beautiful woman that's working in this restaurant where Bucky and this old man is. And the old man starts basically picking up this young girl for Bucky, which I thought was kind of odd because if we remember when Bucky met the uh, Agent Carter, he was always the ladies' man. Even when we met him in, in Captain America, uh, the first Avenger, he was always really smooth with the ladies. And maybe the it's been that long because he does mention that hey it's been since the 1940s that I was even able you know that I've danced with a woman, but the old man basically sets him up and and like says hey you know he wants to ask you out on a date and the girl's like I wouldn't mind and I'm free by ten and basically does that so but I found it kind of awkward that he wasn't that smooth but I you know I I get it you know being since the 1940s and then it's like i think what nine you know now it's like in or at least in marvel time it's 2023 or 2025 around there if i'm not mistaken so there's a long time right the butterflies will get there and even says it like i mean you know i don't even know how to talk and i have to be a you know get ready you know kind of adapt to stuff so i thought that scene was was really really good so we cut back to sam and sam is driving somewhere we don't know but he ends up coming up into a fishing ward where there's you know fishermen and everything and we get to see falcon's sister with her nephews and you know sam is going over there to help his sister out but we find out that when when sam was gone for those five years that his sister was left alone with her two children and trying to raise them run a business and it was super hard and sam's like look i'm back i'm gonna help you and you and he's like we'll get a loan because their business her business is struggling she has she wants to sell the boat because she's a fisherman or a fisherwoman 
and you know she wants she needs the money to be able to save the house and and but and uh, sam's like no let's go get a loan let's go to a bank i'm gonna help you out and you almost get a feel that you know he has money now apparently or he has a plan which we'll find out later that he does want a plan but the sister doesn't want her him to help for whatever reason at this point which we find out later um a little bit as to why she doesn't want to, him to help so we cut to bucky and his date so he's showing up to the date and he has flowers and I thought that it was funny, the interaction between Bucky and the girl, because when he gives her the flower, he goes, oh, how old fashioned of you. And Bucky's just kind of taken aback a little bit because, you know, that's what they did. You know, you showed up on a date. You brought girls for your lady. You brought you brought flowers for your date. That's something so old school that no one does anymore so many many today will be like oh he's simp oh look he's simping but i thought the interaction was was pretty was pretty fun and that line was just gold by by the actress by the young lady so they're on their date and she's asking him a bunch of questions like hey you know how old are you and he goes 106 which i thought was funny and she's like why do you wearing gloves and he goes oh i have circulation problems because he doesn't want to reveal his full identity and Actually, before I continue in the scene where he's talking and he, when he's at the bar or at a restaurant with the old man towards the end of that scene, the old man, you know, talks about his his son and how he misses his son because he's looking at these at this food that his son used to like. And he tells, you know, a Bucky about how his son was killed overseas and that he he doesn't understand what happened because they just told the dad that hey he was at the wrong place at the wrong time and bucky's starting to realize that hey maybe he's the man at least that's how i took it because he, he, he has this weird look in his face he goes like oh like maybe this is the man's father of the of the young man that i killed when when he was the winter soldier so anyways we're back on the date and you'll see why I went back a little bit because I skipped that part. But so in this date, she's asking him questions and, they, and she brings out Battleship and they're playing Battleship and she turns it into a, a, a drinking game. And I love that. I have a ton of, of board games and I try to be creative when I do stuff like drinking games or eating games when we know, you know, whether it be checkers, whether it be Battleship whether it be like guess who or any kind of just board game that you have there you i try to make it interesting which a lot of us do and i thought that was a nice scene that where they're like hey you know you you play battleship and she goes all right you know i i keep them here for like boring late night shifts and they're, they're playing this drinking game and i like the banter going back and forth and then this young lady starts bringing up, like she says, I think it's awesome that you, cause she asked him, like, do you have parents? And Bucky says, yes, but they died. And she goes, yeah, you know, uh, it's hard, you know, when, you know, if you lose a husband, you're a widower. And if you lose your parents, you're an orphan. But the older gentleman, we you know when he loses his son, there is no word for that when you lose your son. And it hits Bucky so hard when she's talking that he just gets up and leaves the date. He, he just can't take it no more. And he leaves and you're, I, I mean, I was like, well, where is he leaving? Like, why did he just get up and go? And we, we see him going to what I'm assuming is his apartment or his building where he lives. And he knocks on this door and who opens but the older gentleman. And when the older gentleman opens the door, Bucky looks in there and he sees a picture like a, mem a memorial in this old gentleman's house and sure enough it's the it's the young kid that he killed overseas and you almost feel like Bucky's gonna tell him to 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 let him know like hey yes I'm the killer that killed your son but he just basically says hey here's I owed you for lunch and here you go and he brings him the money and he just leaves and that's when you i i connected two and two together like oh th he's trying to make amends like this is the older he's trying to cross someone else off this list and it's not going to be that easy i mean how do you tell someone hey i'm i'm the reason you're sad i'm the reason for your depression 
I'm the one that took your son away from you. The most, the thing you, you, you cherish the most in your life. I'm the guy that takes that, that, and so you can see the dilemma. So after that, you know, hard scene and, and he looks at his, at his list and we see the gentleman's name. I can't remember off the bat. I didn't write that as one of my notes. So excuse me for that. Uh, but he sees, he's, he looks at down in his notebook and then we cut to Falcon and he's basically talking to his sister and they're going back and forth. And the sister is still so reluctant to, to allow Falcon to help him because she's so used to it. I mean, five years, you doing it by yourself. You're going to get accustomed to that. And you're not, if you if you haven't had no help, Hey, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I've been doing it. So why am I going to wait, wait, you know, now hope that you're going to help me out when you ha hadn't even done that. In, in the last five years and mind you he was gone and sure he was blimped out but still she got accustomed and falcon's like no let me help you we'll get a loan and we'll fix up the boat we'll fix up the house you will do everything that you plan you know he has that gung-ho attitude of trying to help his sister and finally his sister almost like reluctantly goes fine let's do it maybe it's different maybe sam has a different plan and will work and you know they're off to the bank to to try to get this loan so then we cut to our young military officer that was helping sam uh in the foreign country i guess i, I should have wrote in i should have written this countries but we cut back to our army brat i should call i'm not i'm not an army brat but just our soldier that's helping sam and he's trying to get information about this secret kind of revolts going and in the scene where we had bucky i mean sam and him talking in the town square over tea he tells them about hey there's this group that they preach about a world with no borders kind of we're all one world united there's no such thing as like hey th this country is better than this one is just basically a world without border with ultimate freedom which it sounds nice and the soldier says hey it sounds nice in and when we think about it but it's a lot more difficult in in actual when you put it into into action so he's tracking these th this secret organization down and he, he i guess he finds out where they're gonna be hanging out and we sure enough he's in the middle of it and we see they're setting up something and they're all kind of choreographed together and they put on these masks but they put on these masks to help confuse because they're robbing a bank and we see what we could only assume is a super soldier that's up to this point even though i think and this is just my theory and I'm going to bring up a theory about this completely, but I want to put it out here first just because I don't want to be scooped. But I think this is a mutant that was brought on by Wanda's, you know, attached to Wanda, the WandaVision show when she has the outburst before she creates the hex that I believe encircled the earth. I think this is our first mutant or as cap was to it enhance or say it enhance how captain america said it in age of ultron when he's talking about quicksilver and he goes oh we have enhancement enhanced in the field or they're enhanced in the field i think these this is the first inclusion of mutants into the mcu but more on that when i bring out that theory so he basically jumps like two stories doesn't have no problem with it and just kicks a bunch of ass. You know, he's like throwing people and, and he's just not just throwing them, he's launching them as he hits them. So our, 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 our soldier tries to like arrest him. And he goes, hey, freeze, you know, you're under arrest, but he's no match. I mean, he, he picks him up, slams him down and then kicks him in the face and knocks him out. So he's definitely, if, if, if he's not a mutant, like I believe he is, he's definitely something to do with the super soldier serum. But I think given the fact that this is five months after the events of WandaVision and how I believe that Wanda, like she gave the powers to, to Rambo, I think this, the, the, that same force is what's created. And I, I, I think it's hinted at a little bit later in the episode, but we will get to that when, when we get to that scene. So we cut to Bucky, I mean, to Sam and his sister at the bank and they're trying to get a loan. And the guy's like, oh, I, the guy, the, the, 
the guy that working at the bank, he goes, I know you from somewhere. Did you play football? And Falcon has a grin in his face, in his face, like, oh yeah, I know you know me. Where do you know me from? And he does like a little wing sign and he goes, oh, you're Falcon. And he goes, yeah, I'm Falcon. And they kind of have this nice little back and forth. And he takes a selfie like we all would, right? With celebrities. He goes, hey, look who I'm hanging out with. And he starts talking about the loan, like, hey, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, I'm Falcon and a lot of people help me out and I'm hoping that I get this loan. And then the agent basically says, well, do you have any money coming in? And we find out that, you know, every, that uh, Sam doesn't have any money. You know, you would think like, what do you mean he doesn't have any money? He worked with Stark. He was in the Avengers facility. You mean there was no money? And he basically tells us like, look, it was done on free will. People just did stuff for us and people were helpful for us. And we get, maybe it was me, but there was definitely a racial overtone, which a lot of sadly African-Americans have dealt with that, this very issue. And I'm not saying that this is it or, or anything, but you definitely had that feel because of the and even they bring it up like or Sam kind of hints at it like or Sam's sister kind of hints at it like hey this is what they do to our people kind of even though they don't really say that but you definitely at least for me I got that overtone over that and when they bring it up to the loan agent he definitely says like hey that's not it like you just have no money your finances are all over the place there, there's no way that I could give you this loan and he denies them but I maybe again maybe it's just me but you definitely felt that at least for me when I saw that in that overtone and it's something that again not only African Americans but Hispanic or minorities deal with a lot and you could go and do your own research and there's been YouTube videos about it undercover sting operations or undercover undercover news agencies and private YouTubers that have done this experiment to show how banks discriminate against minorities, especially African Americans and Hispanics, how you could go in there with the same criteria as a Caucasian and they'll be able to get a loan as opposed to African Americans or Hispanics. I'm throwing in Hispanic cause I'm Hispanic. So, but you definitely, feel that overtone but you guys let me know in the comments whether i'm right or wrong did you guys feel the same on that scene but you know ultimately they get denied and the sister is just deflated she's like i i knew i shouldn't have done this i knew you shouldn't have let me get my hopes up this always happens to and she that's what she says this always happens to people like us and you're like, oh, that's so messed up, you know, and, and, but, but Sam's like determined. She goes, I'm going to get this loan. I don't care how many banks I'm going to do or go to how many stuff I got to do. We're going to get this and we're go and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come through with what I promised. So we cut to Sam back at the, in his boat and he's trying to fix the engine. He's just trying to do something productive after the huge loss about getting the loan. So, you know, it's just to feel better about him about just the situation and he's you know he's working on the engine and he tries to start it up seeing if it worked that what he did but it doesn't the, the boat doesn't start and he's kind of down in the dumps at this moment and he gets a, te a text from the soldier and he goes hey i need you to get somewhere for you can see this footage and then we see sam in a room and he's looking at the images of of the soldier he was recording what was going on when he was confronting these people. And this is where we have the hint. He, cause you know, he says, oh, they're enhanced and, and he, you know, they have superpower or he, he was just launching people and they, and they kind of go like, oh, you know, do you think this is, and, and, and Sam stops them. And it's like, they're hinting at it, at a event that we don't know about yet that already happened in the past. And I'm like, well, what happened in the past? that can can create something or or because he's like do you think this is one of uh, and he stops them and you're like one of what one of what and and do you think this happened because of 
And then he cuts them like, what do you mean? What happened? What event? What was like, they don't finish it. And they just give you that little tease. They, they, they dangle this carrot right in front of me. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's, it's Wanda. It's what Wanda did. It's what Wanda did. But I'm just, I'm going out on a ledge on that, but they definitely tease something. I'm the one attaching meaning to that, but they tease something and I can't wait for that reveal to happen. But I will have a, like I said, the theory that I already described in this video, I'm going to have a standalone theory for that. So in this moment that he's seeing this footage, his sister comes in and says, Hey, you got to watch this. And it's a news conference. And it's the same guy that we saw at the museum when he gave over the shield, having a press conference saying about a, hey, in these times we need a symbol, we need a hero. And we see Sam just like looking at the screen intensely at the TV and his sister's just like beside herself. She's looking at the TV, but looking at, at him like she already knows. Like this is, you know, obviously a replay of something that already happened live. And she's just wondering like, how is Sam going to react? And you see Sam twitching and he's holding his fist and his hands and stuff. And this guy keeps on talking in the news. He goes, oh, you know, we need a sim symbol. We need someone to believe. And then we have our reveal. Uh, he says, oh, here we go. Our new Captain America. And Sam is crushed. You see Sam look down like he's like, what did I do almost? Kind of like, well, he, I'm not going to say kind of like, it's just, he was crushed. You could see how that bothered him. Like he was like, what? Like, I didn't want to bring on the mantle. I gave this dope speech. I said how there's only one Captain America and then all of a sudden you guys are going to do me like that and give the shield to someone else. And, and we see this new Captain America roll down the steps and, 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 they, and you hear the, the, the Captain America theme in the background, but it's all distorted. It's not the actual theme. It's off key is going, you know, wobbly and stuff like that. Definitely indicating that. Yeah, he might look like Cap, but this isn't Cap. And he isn't going to be a good Cap. At least that's what I took from the music. Because again, it was definitely Cap's music, but it was, in, it was in a very warped way. And this arrogant SOB, you know, is, 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 is uh, holding the shield and then winks at the camera. And that's our first episode. What an amazing episode. What a well-written episode. What a well-shot episode. And for, I know it's just the first, the first episode, but the, it lived up to the hype. I am more than pleased with what I saw. I can't, I can't wait for episode two. Next week is too long to wait, but I can't wait to see what everyone theorizes about this. If they saw the same things that I did, but I want to know your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. What were some of your favorite parts of this episode? Is there something that you guys saw that I didn't see? Do you guys agree with the theory that I have that maybe somehow the events in one division are connected? to this series even though everyone from the showrunners has told have has been telling us that no there's no connection the fact that they were, were referring to something in the past what did you guys think about how it was written did you know how it was shot did you guys like the action scene in the beginning just let's let's, let's talk about it i want i'm definitely interested to see what you guys thought so put put them down in the comments uh and like always that's a wrap.